All right, what's going on, boys and girls? This is going to be a different kind of video than I normally do. People like this always interest me. Um, they tend to be really, really intelligent or really, really dumb. I've not met much in between. So my take on this, um, I want to give my rebuttal reasons to the five reasons that Timmy Tech TV here presents as reasons not to use Linux. Just as a note, I use OS X. I use Windows and I use, you know, Nix and Android and BB10 and etc. So I'm speaking from actual usage. Reason five. There's too many distributions. Now, this has been a problem for a long time, and it's only getting worse. It's just a matter of, I wish people would pool their resources and make one distribution more mass appeal and, you know, a better competitor to Windows, so at least people have a choice. But there's just too many distros, you know. I can think of, like, ten off the top of my head that are common knowledge to me, and I'm not a very big, you know, user of Linux. I use it on my Raspberry Pi, I use it on, you know, Android phones when I use Android phones, but other than that, not a huge Linux user. I have used it for work in the past, but like I said, too many distros. You can think of 10 off the top of your head. You're probably thinking of about three too many. I know your core distros, everything else is based off from. Yeah, you got those independent projects like Solus that do things their own way, but for the most part, most of the big distros are based off something else or are their own base. Know the difference in Arch between Arch and Gen 2 and Slack and know the difference between DB and Ubuntu and OpenSUSE and Fedora. You got your bases covered for the most part. So I find your argument a little bit disingenuous there. And quite frankly it's a little flawed. It's flawed because once you understand the bases, you're going to end up, everything else, the desktop environment, all that stuff just kind of feeds into the background. And it doesn't matter because a lot of the distributions are different icon sets, they're different desktop sets, they're, they're just different. But the core is, just, for the most part, the same. Drivers. Let me critique this a bit. The open source drivers. You do realize Crimson, the new driver base, is based off the Radeon content that is the open source driver for Nix now, right? Just throw that out there. On the flip side, NVIDIA. Their driver is essentially cross platform with like 90% of their code being. Use, availably usable on both platforms, or all three platforms in this case. I personally remember a time when Wintel modems, you know, little forum cord, <laughs> for internet, didn't work. So those were driver issues to me. I remember Broadcom and using the Broadcom firmware cutter to extract the firmware to make my wires card work. I remember this stuff. Drivers have gotten a shit done easier. 
thank you, Jockey, for doing what you do. I have found that the hardware detection in Linux is better than Windows. Windows is able to pull stuff from other developers together. I have a better out-of-the-box experience with Linux. Netbook, Windows 10, not going to happen. Netbook, Mandrero Netbook Edition of Linux works perfectly fine, and my Broadcom chip works out of the box. Nothing needed. Enough said. Okay, Windows 10. Why does my start menu have A ads and B look like somebody threw up on my start menu? Windows 8. Why does it look like someone threw up across my entire screen? Windows 7. Eh, it's alright. GUIs are relative. Linux, here's this great thing. It has a GUI to suit pretty much everybody. Right now, I'm using Deepin and Deepin Desktop on this particular machine because I prefer the GUI. Other GUIs that are available on Linux that look better than every version of Windows. GNOME 3, Unity, KDE Plasma 5, Cinnamon, Enlightenment, XFCE, Lubuntu, uh, LXQT or LXDE or whatever it's called now. There are so many Oh, many, so many that do Windows design paradigm and Windows GUIs better than Windows. Because, to be quite frank, Windows looks like vomit on a screen. Current reiterations of 8 and 10. That's just what it is. Because that's all choice. That's all relative to the user. You'll find an ongoing theme with this in a minute. Number two. With UI comes software. And this, to me, is the biggest reason I don't use Linux on a main PC or most PCs. But software. I can't run Adobe on Linux. I'm not using Linux. And, of course, the first thing a Linux fan is going to say is, Oh, but there's this one program you can use. No. I want to use Adobe. There's about 30 seconds more to this. It goes on about the chicken and the egg situation, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you right now. This is where I have a hard time with you. You want to use Adobe. You know it's not available on Linux, so you're not going to use Linux. That's your prerogative. But if you're going to go into using something or try using something so close-minded you are doomed to fail at what you're trying. Technology is about being open-minded. I know that certain things are not available on Linux that I need to use personally for my own workflow. Video editing? I do not prefer Linux. I use Linux for it. I've done Linux videos with the video editors. I prefer Corel Video Studio Pro Ultimate, which is on Windows only. Guess what? Not available on this platform. I willingly do these videos on real metal, on, not on virtual machines. I do these videos, edit them in this particular environment, because to show that you have to be willing to adapt. Technology is about adapting. This is what I hate about IT people. They do not like change. Now, change for the sake of change isn't always good. 
don't get me wrong. I mean, there's plenty of this in the, the Linux world that bothers the crap out of me. But there are times when you have to have a level of adaptability when it comes to IT and tech that allows you just to get your shit done. I don't care if I'm sitting at PowerShell or a CLI of Bash. Which one's going to let me do what I need to get done, done? I don't care what video editor or GUI's in front of me. It can look like vomit for all I care. I mean, Christ, they use Windows 10, so looks like vomit, but does it allow me to do what I need to? And the answer is yes. Do I have to change up a few things? Yeah. It might take me a little bit longer. Sure. But the fact of the matter is, I'm willing to adapt to the situations that are put in front of me. And technology is about willing to adapt to things that are coming down, either down the pipe or at you at that moment. And by being this way, technology people that claim to be technology enthusiasts are limited, close-minded, and narrow-minded. And if you're not, if you don't have a level of adaptability in technology, you're doomed to fail. is supported by Microsoft, first off, and their OEM agreements. This is why when people have issues, they talk to an OEM or they talk to Microsoft. Because there's a support. It's a novel idea. You can get that in Linux. There are companies, believe it or not, that actually sell these weird things. These are OEM companies that sell Linux systems like Zyrezen or System76 or hell even Dell that sell pre-installed Linux systems with a nice little number you can pick up and call for support. A uh, duh. Because how much do you want to bet? 90% of most generic computer users don't actually call those. It's the tech guy that calls those numbers. So support, because how many people are the tech guy for the family, or the tech person? They, they're the ones that end up calling Microsoft. They're the ones that end up calling Dell or X, Y, or Z company. So support's there. Ease of use is a crock of shit. I've talked about this before. Easy use is based on design paradigm theory. And to me, design theory is just that it's theory. It, it's an argument that can and cannot be made all at the same time. Because if you want current design theory, this is current design theory. 
two clicks, and it's there. And I'm going to tell you right now, Windows is terrible at it. And I mean terrible. This desktop is actually better at doing what Windows wants to do than Windows is. If you're going by the two-click mentality, how do I change settings in Windows? Well, unlock it, go to settings, go to roughly the category that it's in, go into the category, then find it. So you're talking three, four clicks maybe. Most generic end users only want two. Why do you think Android settings are drag down and poke at? It's two. This particular OS, even. Oh, hey, look, all my settings, and click. And if I really want to go to that, that's it. Programs, super Windows key. Look at that. That is the design theory now. I can work around that, though, because that design doesn't always work for me. Example, Deep in Store doesn't have everything available that for me that I need to get to, so I install Synaptic. Yes, I can drop to CLI and do it, but I don't. Ease of use is relative to the user. If you're talking simplification of a UI as opposed to the dumbing down of the whole OS, that's different. Deepen, to me, strikes the right balance of simplification of the UI and the OS, uh, simplification of the UI without dumbing down the OS. Windows, this, on the other hand, not so much. Because this doesn't know what it wants to be. This is why Windows 8 did not work because you had two different design paradigms. That's really that simple. 